Oh, you know what? Our, our, who was that? Robert. Hello, Robert. Hello, Robert. Hey, somebody's going to have to mute because we're getting feedback. So we have one. Mm -hmm. All right, one. Okay. All right. Close the doors. I'm going to do a roll call real quick. Um, so, welcome everyone to the uh, May 25th, 2022 uh, Interim Board Meeting of the Collegiate Charter School Board of Trustees, the date, time, location of which have been published in the Daily Local News on the Collegiate website and on the Collegiate calendar. I ask now that we please uh, rise from the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, I'm Chris McHenry. I am here. Mrs. DiMaggio? Present. Mrs. Gears? I know she was on. She said she may have to mute. I'm on mute. Sorry, present. <laughs> It's okay. Mr. Baxter? Mr. Thankajan? Mr. Randall? Mr. Brown? Mr. Gerardo? Thank you very much. Uh, we do have a quorum. Also on the uh, conference line uh, is our solicitor, Kevin McCann. And um, here at the school is Dave McInoni, Marita Barber, and myself. We do have some public comment received by email on the agenda items. And real quick, uh, who just joined us? Thank you. Thank you. We are up to um, public comment on agenda items, and there are a few emails that have been received. Yes, three uh, public comments have been submitted. Uh, the first one has been submitted by Donna Rauchett, um, East Fallowfield and Coastal Area School District. Um, her comment is on a specific agenda item. Uh, and her, her public comment is regarding the proposed change to the health and safety plan. I would like to make a comment that prior to approval, the board should consider undertaking a survey to obtain staff views on what the staff considers necessary when the CDC and Chester County Health Department issue strongly recommended guidance when the transmission level is high to support their health and safety and consider doing a similar survey to all parents. The second submitted comment is from Alyssa Ginkley. I apologize if I mispronounce that. Um, from Downingtown Borough in the Downingtown Area School District. Again, her comment is on a specific agenda item. The comment is, I feel masks should remain optional for the remainder of the school year. County rates may have been going up, but the school incident rates in many of the local public schools have been down. It is not a federal or state mandate that the kids in K-12 remain masked as we are not in a state of emergency anymore. This year has been tough on everyone, and I'm sure our children would like some kind of normalcy so they can get pictures and enjoy the last bit of smiling faces and not have to be masked. It is one of the hottest points of the year, and I know my children suffer wearing a mask even when it's cold out. The third and final submitted uh, public comment is from Rachel Briggs from West Bradford and Downingtown School District. Uh, again, comment on a specific agenda item. And uh, the comment is, thank you for your time in reading this. In 2020, we had a global pandemic that paralyzed the world. We were all told to social distance and wear a mask. We complied. Then the world slowly started to open. Masks were still required, and we continued to comply. 
It is now 2022, almost halfway through the year. We have come to realize that COVID, much like the flu, is never going away. Currently, Chester County is high, yet the Chester County Health Department is continuing the recommendation for masks optional. It makes me wonder if they realize this is permanent. Are we going to live our lives to COVID ratings? Are we going to live our lives flip-flopping mask wearing? This is not sustainable. COVID ratings should not be the focus. Academically and mentally, we are still recovering. We need to be focused on ensuring the students are getting the education and support needed to thrive in life. Mask wearing should be optional. Mask wearing should be a choice. Mask wearing is a choice everywhere else but in a school. The same children that sit in the classroom are the same students that choose to wear a mask or not while playing sports or seeing a movie. Let's move forward. Let's be different than the other schools and set the standard of choice. I ask the board to make masks permanently optional giving the student a choice. Thank you. And that concludes the submitted public comments. Okay. And there are no public in attendance. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Can Thank I you, Is that Benio? Okay. Um, also, please state your name too when you motion or second. Uh, is there a second? Thank you, Elizabeth. Sure. Any discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the agenda say aye. 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 Any opposition or abstention? Hearing none, is there a motion uh, to consider the business and operations item? Is there a second? Very well. Um, Mrs. Barber, would you please give us an overview of the changes to the health and safety plan? Sure. The recommendation uh, for board consideration is to revise the language uh, regarding uh, the universal and co correct wearing of masks. Um, our current plan calls for an alignment to what had been the CDC guidance. Uh, that it would be optional in low and medium levels of county transmission and then required in high level. Uh, the CDC has changed their guidance and our recommendation is that our language would align with that to read that masks would be recommended in high level. Any questions from the board? Okay, hearing none. Um, I am going to do a roll call vote. Yes, I Yes. So, I mean, obviously we've seen a pretty large surge in, you know, um, staff that were out. Um, I think, you know, that is, that are out due to, you know, infection and whatnot. Um, so I think not only from a safety perspective, but also from an operational perspective. Um, you know, the guidance in terms of isolation and quarantine hasn't changed. Um, and staffing remains very precarious for the school. So, um, certainly with the guidance, you know, from the CDC, it is strongly recommended. Um, and that, you know, is an entity level decision as well as could be interpreted as a personal level decision. So, with the CDC strongly recommending, Masking, um, you know, what exactly is the plan to bridge the gap? Um, should we continue to make it optional during the certainly the surge that we're in? You know, we're in high community spread, um, and, and what the plan to bridge the gap is yeah. to close the school again because we don't have enough staff to to teach because they're out. Um, I think. I'd like to hear a little bit more on that. Sure. Um, so, and, and that's, a, that's a very fair question and fair observation. Um, yes, we have seen across campus in different buildings um, a surge moving through. Um, we also discussed. Could you please mute Robert? We're getting echo. Thank you. Um, we also discussed, um, you know, the sustainability um, 
we also recognize that using the virtual option is not an option, um, especially for parents at this point in the year. So um, the building administrators have been doing a wonderful job of uh, you know, securing coverage uh, for classrooms. Um, in, in, and buildings are sharing resources. So if one building is down uh, some staff, um, you know, the, each day the building principals check in with one another. Um, and, uh, you know, our, our goal and our focus is to finish the year uh, in, without switching any grade or building back to virtual learning um, and to stay in person and to um, provide the coverage uh, necessary to keep every building operational safely. So, you know, we in 435 we provide support um, if buildings are struggling during lunch and recess coverage. Um, so we are we are finding the staff um, to be able to, to provide that. Uh, also, we increased the pay uh, for our daily substitute. Um, so we have been successful in securing more daily subs. Uh, through our subservice. We are also seeing that we're actually, I think, on the downside of the surge on campus. Um, so more staff have returned this week than are out. Does that answer? I think, yeah, in part. Um, I think it leaves a lot, you know, um, to, you know, roll the dice, it will say, you know, obviously, I think, you know, we've learned over these last two years that um, the virus has taught us, you know, that we need to be humble in terms of, you know, making the assumptions of, of what the future holds. Um, and so I still think, you know, this leaves a lot to be desired in terms of, um, you know, what, what comes down the road. Um, and I think, you know, it's also worth mentioning that, um, you know, in communal environments, um, such as um, extended care facilities, facilities, senior living facilities, group homes, et cetera, um, masking is still required, masking is still required in healthcare. Um, and a lot of the reason why, certainly staff safety and, and um, safety of patients and residents, but um, also, it was, it's just an operational thing, um, you know, in order to kind of help, um, you know, staff stay um, healthy and stay away from, you know, contracting and transmitting the virus to others, um, you know, and that's just from an operational um, standpoint. Um, and so I think, you know, in terms of communal settings and close quarters and close contact, um, you know, probably schools are a shade away um, from, you know, a, a communal um, environment. And so um, I would say, you know, based on challenges that we've had, um, we've got it clear that there's waning community, waning, um, community within the community. Um, and, you know, what's going on with the current surge and why we're high transmissible. I do not think or believe that it is prudent at this point. Um, to continue to recommend a for certainly the safety and wellness of our staff and our students, but also uh, just for our general ability to operate um, and continue to function. You know, hearing that virtual is not an option, we have to stay open. Um, I think you know that we would be a little um, presumptive to think that um, in a couple weeks. We would not be in a situation where, or unfortunately, it does have to be the option. It's it's for this current school year. I do. 
I do. And our team has, you know, every day we, we, we discuss this and, um, and, you know, our building administrators, I, we check with them because knowing that they're on the front line, um, they, they feel very confident. And, and certainly if it were to ever get to a point where, you know, I mean, health and safety is, is, is a, is a bigger issue than, um, you know, just monitoring uh, COVID-19, you know, it, it's got multiple facets and we understand operation, operating safely also means supervision of students. Um, and uh, so that is always in our, our forefront, um, but we believe strongly we can finish this year strong. Like I said, based on our current numbers and uh, tracking return dates, um, we believe we'll be well poised for the end of the year. Any other questions or comments? I think I'll also add that should CDC guidance change, we would look at our health and safety plan as well. Right, and, and we've always said that the guidance would trump, you know, everything we did. Um, and if that should change, we would adhere to it. Um, so we, you know, and, and again, we are recommending and we also know that when people are coming back from COVID protocols, masking is still a continued requirement for them. So we are still enforcing all the other mitigation strategies that are in the plan. So this is a, so I'll just have a, a quick question. So are we looking for the CDC to actually say um, masking is required before we would make it a requirement? Because right now on the website it just says, you know, the community level is high and it says we're a mask and we're in public and it specifically calls out including uh, K through 12. So just, you know, for future reference, I guess, the board's powers, are we specifically looking for that, that keyword of, like, masking and doors is required? We, so, you know, throughout this, I, I believe we've been very transparent that we, while this plan is specific to us and um, that we have relied on the guidance from the CDC, the Chester County Health Department, the Pennsylvania Department of Health, and have adopted their language and recommendations. I guess the better question is, like, at what point do we decide, okay, you know, is it when the case count is too high, the transmission are too high, or we get an influx of teachers, staff who are out that we would have to come back to the table and say, okay, we need to make it required. Um, if we're going to basically take what's on the CDC, you know, recommendation on our website, which I do agree with, that it just says we wear a mask, it say it's required, we do need to have on the flip side, whatever that barometer that gauge is going to be or that trigger to say, okay, now it's too high, it, it produces a burden on risk to you know, the safety of the issue. Community, we need to make a man. I don't know if we have that that trigger just yet, or if we can explicitly state what that trigger is. Well, the, the trigger is the CDC recommendations. So, so right now on the web page, CDC recommends indoor masking by all students ages two years and older, staff, teachers, and visitors. So, if that came to required, and it was from the CDC, that would most likely be our trigger. So, Sal, just uh, to add to that. You know, there's also consultation with the Chester County Health Department, who we continue to report our positive case numbers to on a weekly basis. Um, so they are helping us to monitor our level of transmission on our campus. So certainly in consultation with them, they would help us to make that determination if the numbers on campus uh, would trigger the need to go to um, a required masking component. Okay, so that's what I was looking for. Yep. Thank you. Thank you all. Any other questions or comments from the board? Okay, 
hearing none. That spelled out, by the way, um, what that trigger looks like, what the consultation would be. Um, I mean, have we spoken to the, the, the county health department and asked them, you know, um, based on what's going on, would you ever make the requirement or would you continue because of the language of the CDC and, and the environment right now, would you continue, would you, you know, say, we strongly recommend requiring that? So, our, my meetings with them have gone to monthly and I know last week when the county transmission level changed to high, the health department was inundated with phone calls. Um, and at that point, they were still holding firm to not feeling or not recommending that masks be required, that they were still aligning their guidance with the CDC guidance of recommended. Um, each, each agency, each school reports their numbers, um, as I said, weekly. So they would then provide that personal consultation with us. Um, you know, they haven't set a threshold. Um, they would, again, be looking at our numbers, looking at, uh, you know, what they consider the, you know, the, the spread on campus um, based on you know, where the where the outbreak was, um, and and go that way. So they would they would, you know, talk with us through all the all the elements of of just not just the numbers. So no, they haven't set a specific threshold for us as a school. Yeah, and you know, I think I would, you know, I would also say, like, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of nuance here, guys, and, you know, um, because we could get to the point, um, you know, and I think, you know, based on the climate and what's going on, um, where what what does what does this look like when um, the language becomes the CDC recommends requiring masks in schools or the Department of Health recommends requiring masks in schools? You know, um, I think based on um, you know really kind of the the atmosphere of what's going on. Um, we're probably, you know, at a point where, um, you know, folks are going to be asked to look at your community and look at what's going on in the community and make some and make some tough decisions. Um, and you know, as we're beginning to learn more about the virus now, two years into it, um, you know, I'm not sure that we will ever get to a point where someone hard and fast anymore says you have to wear masks. So, um, you know. I'm I would strongly recommend us, you know, really think about, you know, what the intent is of strongly recommend versus recommend requiring. Because if the recommendation is that we require masks, but it's not mandated, does that entail a different conversation? Does that entail another change to the health and safety plan um, or, or, or something altogether different? I think your point is something I was going to allude to as well. And then, Jay, you brought up a good point as well, where you confirmed the current masking or health and safety plan is just for school years 21 22. From projections, especially you can go through kind of where we care, you know, typically in the fall, there's going to be a spike. So, are we intending or, plan or planning for? a health and safety plan for 20, uh, 22, 23 as well? It's my understanding, Sal, that uh, since this plan was tied to uh, the American Rescue Plan Act, that as long as the um, ARP, our ARP ESSER grant is in existence, which is until 2024, we would need a health and safety plan uh, to align uh, to that. Gotcha. So, for this is it's similar to 
when we came back for the 2021 school year, we had a plan. And then uh, this one was created for this uh, school year. So it would be my understanding that we would be revising and um, presenting one to guide us through the 22-23 school year. Okay. It definitely doesn't think it's there because, you know, like Robert just mentioned, I don't know if, if, if the CDC will ever go back to the rigid, like, not being required because, you know, we all know how politicized it is everything that comes with that. So that was the question I was asking if we were looking for those specific keywords like you know required versus not required. I don't know if they'll ever say again that is required. Now they have one they recommended. I think that's probably the highest form of like hey you need to wear a mask that will probably produce. Um, but again it's definitely something to consider related to like the trigger and you know, it's the other side of we take these you know, optional or recommended or recommended. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? Yeah, I just have a comment, you know. Yesterday you were in that story, there's no big word for it. So I'm not sure where I am now, but I'm not sure where I am now. comments, uh, we can do a roll call vote because we are on a conference call. Um, so the vote is for approval of the revised health and safety plan. Um, so Chris McHenry, I vote yes. Uh, Mrs. DiMaggio? Yes. Mrs. Gears? Yes. Mr. Baxter? Yes. Uh, Mr. Thank you, Chan. Did Mr. Randall join us? I think he had work accommodations. Uh, Mr. Brown? Just so that I'm clear, just want to make sure the, the, the proposal is just to make the mask optional, right? Correct. To change the language from required to recommended. Mr. Gerardo? No. So the motion passes by a vote of six to one. And it is approved. Um, there were no remarks submitted from the public for general interest, and there are no members of the public here. Are, are there any final remarks or comments from the board on any topic? So I just um, I'd like to thank Marita and and the uh, administration here and in the buildings and those that are um, for providing the assistance to the Coatesville School District with um, our counselors and therapists today and um, you know just extending that hand for what's truly important. With that, is there a motion uh, to adjourn?
Is there a second? All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 And, no. Any opposed? Great. All right. Uh, thank you all very much. I know these, we're still going through weird times with COVID and other issues. And I know that everybody here at 435, and especially myself, um, really appreciate your flexibility and, and your willingness to, to help us out today. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Stay well. Bye. Bye. Yeah, have a good weekend. Wait, are you going to do that to some of the posts?